So in this video, we are talking updates. Let's get to it. So stay tuned to Roscoe's Reef. We'll see you guys in New York, June 23rd and 24th. Hey, welcome back everybody. So on this episode, we're talking updates on the tank. It's been about a month or so since the last update. A lot of things have happened. A lot of things have um, developed in the tank and then we're gonna to touch upon those in this segment. So let's get to the tank and check out what's going on. So here we are on the left-hand side of the tank and anyone who's been a subscriber of my channel for some time now will notice automatically that something's missing. That's right. The zoanthid garden that was here is now gone. Uh, I arranged and had been talking with uh, Travis over at Fisher Hex and he came over, we met on a Saturday and these are one of the things that I took out of the tank and gave to him to donate to the Reef Tank for Veterans program that he's running. I will leave a link to his channel uh, in the description down below so go on over show some love and tell them that uh, Scott sent you. Uh, first, now, what that did is it gave me the opportunity to get some room for the purple, green, and gold um, candy canes to get out from under the Hollywood stunner that had been basically shading a lot of that coral. So I'll see how we do as far as getting it into the light more. You can see as far as the overflow, uh, the green Monty Pora that I have, uh, I have a frag of it and I put it on this overflow to grow out to join the red digitata and the forest fire digitata as well as the purple. So um, still working on getting the overflow to encrust and grow out so this way it kind of gets this boring area a new look to it. Now when I did get the zoanthid garden out it freed up a lot of space on the sand bed to kind of spread things out a little bit, which is something that I really want to do for some time. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that the parietes coral is now back down on the sand bed. I kind of had it up, I think, a little too high, and it was getting a little too much light, and it was kind of fading out the colors a little bit. So I did move it down to the sand bed, put it in this area to give it a chance to color up, and it responded really well in a couple of days. Uh, as you can see, it's it's got this nice, deep, purplish red color to it which I really really enjoy plus the uh, worms that are on it came out and uh, really started uh, inhabiting the rock more. As you can see the rainbow uh, favia is also in this area doing uh, splendid and here is that hitchhiker that has if you go back to the earlier videos was just a little speck and now has become quite a big piece. The other thing that happened was I, the trachea, you can see kind of a weird shape to it right now. The powder blue tang has been picking on that side, on the right hand side of it. Now, I'll go back uh, into more information about the powder blue in a minute, but um, for now he stopped and he's come back to his original size, as well as you can see the fungia plate out behind it is really doing nicely. And there is a new piece here, and that is this pink tipped green torch that I got from Fish of Hex. Uh, when he came over he brought it over, he said he had a piece for me and what I'll do is eventually come off the sand bed with it and put it up with the blue tip torch that I have on this shelf which will kind of make this shelf just a total torch shelf and, and I think it'll do good as far as the looks of the tank. Now moving right along there's the Blast of Moose so that's doing really good. Uh, but now on to the Acan colonies. This particular colony right up front is doing the uh, really really good about the best out of all my colonies and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and, and more pronounced and it's uh, turning out to be a real nice piece now in the back my first original ones you see, you see this orange one there is some uh, death that occurred and you see the skeleton I don't know what's causing it I will be checking out and trying to take a look at the peppermint shrimp that are in the tank uh, that worked on the Aptasia problem because there have been some comments left on the channel that they can pick on a cans. Now, if that's the case, they have got to go. Um, you can see across on the other side, as as I can focus as well. Uh, the other ones are doing really good. There's no signs of anything being picked on, so it's kind of a puzzle right now that needs to be solved. 
Now right next to that group is the neon green Favia that keeps growing um, really, really well. And here are the, the neon green candy canes. I've moved them up from the back of the tank now to put them uh, in the middle of the tank. You can see I am having a little issue with some hair algae. Uh, I think the resolution to that is I may throw some GFO back on my tank to kind of strip some phosphate that they may be living on out of the tank. Uh, one of my favorite pieces is the Sunny D's growing like crazy and now that you can see for, from past videos the Aptasia is gone from this group. I do have a small uh, group of uh, Fiji Fias left as well as a mixed bundle of Zoas that I took out of the colony that I really liked uh, one being the Rastas and also the Worldwide Coral Pandora Pallies weren't going out of my tank. Now moving down you're saying wait a minute Scott something's missing well we'll get to that in a minute but the rock flower anemones that I have down here on the sand um, are still really growing really good as well as the night before Christmas Favia which is uh, really like in this area there's not too much light or shade in it for it but now what I did is I moved that uh, my original frog spawn up into that uh, shelf on the top because the frog spawn that was there along with it's the one that was next door to it I gave to Travis over at Fisher Hex for his uh, reef tank program but I figured this one, the old one was really doing well on this shelf. So I put it up here, put this one up here to kind of see if that's the area that the frog spawns love to be in. And so far, so good. The clownfish were really pissed off though when I moved it. So after a little while getting adjusted, they found their home. Now, the red Montipore, you could see as if I, you know, again, I'm having problems focusing it. There is sections missing, and that is because one day when I was adjusting some rocks and cleaning the tank, I dropped this piece on the floor and it broke into a lot of pieces. Um, uh, some of the frags I gave to Travis, some of the frags I have on a frag rack in the back, but it's healed, growing back, and hopefully in a, in a little while it'll be back to its normal self. Uh, along with that is the green Montipora in front of it, all growing and loving being up on to, onto the uh, top section of rock work. I have a, the purple cat's paw in this area as well ch to color up and do the same. Now, my favorite part of the tank. Moving into the middle section is the Jason Fox Bonnie Coral. You can see that the coloration is really getting a deep purple. It does have some browns in the shaded areas and the tips are still showing growth really good and they're a dark blue uh, even though you can't really pick it up in this with the camera, but the growth is outrageous on this coral and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how well this will grow out and um, What the future plans for that may be Another piece that's slowly becoming my favorite is this blue and green polyp acro um, that I have It's just a stunning piece and I love looking at it right next to it is the Fisher Hex Millie and these two staghorns have really surprised me. In the last two or three weeks, they have really started taking off a lot and branching off. I moved one from the left-hand side of the tank. Um, that's the one you see with the little tan spot on it. What that is, is that's the side of that uh, piece that was facing down and wasn't getting light. So when I moved it, um, I put it in that area so it would color up and continue to grow really, uh, really well. But both of these pieces, all of a sudden took off so uh, you just never know I guess when one coral is going to decide hey it's time for me to start growing out and uh, this is the result of it now here we have the green spongiotis coral that I got uh, also from Fisher Hex way back in the day and this is the main mother colony now when I was cleaning the tank one day I did break off a piece that I showed earlier on the on the overflow and the comparison between where I have that frag and also this colony is dramatic. As you can see, the greens on this piece are a lot more deeper than the greens on back on the mother colony. So that'll show you what different light areas, different intensities. This is directly under the center brace of the tank. So you can really see the difference there. Now, right next to it, you could see in the back a purple Montipora that's encrusting down the rock. And also next to that, everybody's been asking, this is my attempt to graft the green and the red Monty. You can see, not working out too well. Um, they're basically growing apart and just growing next to each other. So, looks like that's a fail, but I'll let them grow out and see what develops out of that. 
Okay, so now in the center also, the open maize brain coral and the birthday cake coral are really growing out. The birthday cake coral keeps spreading to that other rock towards the sunny D's, which gives me a little bit of concern. But I am going to let it go and see what happens when the two meet. I have the same kind of situation going on here between the Millie coral and the Jason Fox Barney coral. You can see the upper part, the purple part of the Barney coral is starting to encroach on the Millie's turf. I don't know what's going to happen here either, but I am going to keep my eye out because I don't want one encrusting over the other. And uh, I may have to take a frag of the, the little Millie and put it somewhere else. Now before I end this, uh, I wanted to come back over to this right side of the tank. This is the uh, reddish orange, I guess, mushroom rock. Um, these things are growing really good. I'm happy about it, but these things move like crazy. You can see here I have two in the cave where the cleaner shrimp sits, and also one that's become off, uh, that's come off rather, and made its home in front of the night before Christmas Favia. And what that led to was a really interesting situation because now I have the same genus of mushroom. Uh, one in a really shady area and the others in a really bright area so I'm gonna see what progress happens with those and whichever one grows the largest will stay obviously it'll make me make a decision where to put them now panning back out and taking a big look at the tank let's get on to fish uh, the powder blue tanks uh, being moved what I've been doing is also is talking to Travis about moving him out He's getting too big for my tank and he's causing some problems and I can't put any fish in this tank because he will just annihilate them. So the plan is um, Travis will be coming over, we're going to be catching him and transplanting him and moving to him to the 300 gallon reef over at Fish of Hex and this way I could see him on Travis's video and see how well he's doing and plus Travis and I talk so uh, I'll be able to keep tabs on him. Plus, I'm going, that'll open up my tank to get some new stocking lists and also um, some interesting choices I have planned for um, fish that are going to be put in the tank. So just keep uh, tuned to the channel, hit the bell, so this way you can get alerted to new videos and you can uh, keep tabs on how I stock the tank coming forward. So with that being resolved, it'll leave me with the two clownfish and the three or four blue-eyed carnals that I have uh, they stay in the rocks an awful lot because the powder blue is out uh, but once he's relocated hopefully they come out more also the addition of the new fish will change the landscape of the tank a lot because now there'll be a more movement and not so much coral dominated uh, but we'll see how that goes I'm just really excited about the uh, potential and, and what may be coming down the road as far as uh, how the tanks gonna shape up so, um, as a cloud goes by and the light uh, <laughs> changes color and it should go back to blue, there it is. Uh, that's going to be it for this week. There will be more updates coming up uh, more frequently now. I want to keep up, keep you all updated on, on the progress of uh, the tank and the hair algae issue and, and the remedies of that. And also some updates on what's going on in the infiltration wise. But also, um, there will be a mix of review videos in there as well. I, do have, I have been talking uh, to some people about uh, getting some products to review and also I did purchase uh, some products down in Reef of Blues Orlando that I want to show you guys and give you my opinion on them. Uh, everything's obviously I anything I review I use in my tank because then I can give you uh, an opinion on how it works short term and over time. So that's going to be it for this week. Um, if you are new to the channel hit the subscribe button hit the bell so this way you can get updates on future videos as they come down and also um, if you are a veteran subscriber to the channel I really really want to thank you and appreciate your support so as always this is Scott and I will see you next time around the reef tank thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott as always don't forget to like comment, share and subscribe.